Hey everyone, I'm Rather Go here, and we're getting started with our first run of Hemlock on the channel. Now, normally you start this with Prelude 1, and throughout the campaign you'll do several more Preludes, and the night Preludes are pretty brief, but the day Preludes are incredibly long. They're basically 15 minute bits of gameplay that's unlosable without any stress. It's an extended mulligan phase where you read about five minutes of story text across 15 minutes of very easy, boring gameplay. Now, when I play these on the channel, if you haven't seen me do gameplay before, I don't even read the italicized text on the agendas. Text, rather. I skip any story text because I already know what it says. If you played the game, you know what it says. If you watch someone else play it, you've heard someone else read it. This is always the same. I see no reason to include it in my video and make long videos even longer. So since I don't include story text, and this is just story text, make no mistake, I'll show you the results of the preludes. I've full cleared the first one, so you get one tick mark for everyone but Mother Rachel. You don't write anything down, and then you get your extended mulligan. So I'm coming in with five resources on both, uh, two meat trauma and two meat trauma on Winifred as well. For my in the thick of it, I have a Jessica Hyde with one damage left, so I can pick up an on the mend at the end of my first turn, and a lucky cigarette case here. Coming over to my hands, you can see in Winifred, I have my sleight of hand Thieves Get Combo ready to go, but I'm pretty low on skills. Not to worry, I'm going to throw a deep knowledge at her and she'll be off to the races, at which point I'm going to be kind of just a dude with an axe on Vincent, but I guess that's fine. He'll be the fighter when he'll be the Kluber, but for most of the campaign, this is intended to be double flex. Let's talk about what these decks look like right now before we get into the scenario and what I'm planning on actually doing with them by the time we reach the final scenarios. Starting with Flex Vincent, it's a very weird deck at level zero. It looks like one deck concept built the right column of events and skills, and another deck concept entirely picked the assets. Later on, when the Rudig Axe is upgraded, you get Inscription of the Elders, and you start getting clues with the Axe. And at that point, you can see the crossover between getting your clues and fighting and how the deck sort of does one roll. And the finished version very much does feel cohesive. It has, like, good fighting assets. It has good healing assets with Bandage's Surgical Kit to make your Guard Dogs an infinite, powerful, Tesla source of damage. It's able to get its clues with a base five and book using the axe or skills to bypass higher shot locations. But at low levels, this is kind of a jank fighter that can get some clues, but it's a very weird sort of flex. It's not the bursty high throughput sort of flex that's really good at fighting that we'll see later on in the campaign. Then coming over to our starting Winifred list, this is a Foot Matters deck. It's not going to be purely Foot Matters at the end, but at the start, with cards like Overpower and Perception only being committed to Fist or Book Checks, and using Thief Skits as well, it's just very hard to make a deck where I can commit everything. Where I don't have draws of like Bulldog, Thieves Kit, Cigarette Case, Pickpocketing, and then like any two skills, that's fine, that's an okay hand, but if those skills are overpowering perception, suddenly the character doesn't work. So going hard into Foot Matters and only wanting to do Foot Tests with Bulldog and Thieves Kit and Pilfer makes it a lot easier to always be able to commit two skills and keep Winifred going early in the campaign, which is a lot weaker. Later in the campaign, I am going to try to get all of these assets into play except for the second Thieves Kit, try to play all of these events and all of these skills every round with six action turns because of Ace in the Hole. Will it work? I don't know. The sales pitch is like S tier broken, but what late game rogue isn't? The question is how well does Winifred perform at low levels, how high can I move her in the tier list, and how is this janky double flex team really going to look? Well, only one way to find out. So let's get back into what's going to be our first scenario, Hemlock House. You're allowed to pick any of the five and I'm going with Hemlock House. It's the least fight heavy of the five, although there is a very fight heavy option if you want it. And it seems impossibly fight heavy. I don't know how you're supposed to win the scenario by killing the whole house, but it's neat that it's allowed. Of the other three day scenarios that are allowed, I don't know which two I'm going to play. I'm gonna be playing the scripted night one, night two, and night three scenarios and two of these across the campaign. I will not be playing Ridden and Rock. I've already been cynical about that for a whole video. I won't be cynical here. Just know that if you want to see Ridden and Rock gameplay, you've gone to the wrong place. Now, getting into Hemlock House, we have a two Doom setup agenda, and our act is that clues cannot be discovered if you are not at the location. That's not entirely accurate. Clues cannot be discovered from locations with no investigators. So if someone else is there, you can still use your pendant on the queen to like zip the clues off from across the map, but somebody does have to be there. And then as an action, if your location is unsealed and dormant, then we can spend two clues as a group to place a seal on it, or sorry, to place a resource on it as a seal. The entire map is currently unsealed dormant locations. They're all face up because their other side is a horrible monster. Now, while it says that our objective is just to get seven locations sealed, max experience is to get 10 locations sealed to seal the whole house. There's another threshold for bonus experience at getting eight, so one more than the act. And additionally, in pretty much every scenario in all of Hemlock Vale, 
parlaying these people will get you bonus experience or get you the start of a quest that eventually gives you bonus experience. So it's really important to like go around, talk to everyone, and full clear this scenario. And since all the locations are in play, let's quickly look at them and figure out what we're working with. The foyer is a two shroud location, and it gives me a lightning bolt to move. Limit once per turn, but not group limit, so we can both step around with that. And the dining room is the only other two shroud location. Forced, after you get the last card here, discard one card at random from your hand, but it's also a victory point. This is looking like the best place to pilfer on the map, because there's only one other place that even has enough clues to justify a pilfer. As for the last location, this is victory by the way, so is this. The rest of them are victory, but victory zero, so it's just bottom left and bottom right that I really care about. But the partner is four shroud, four clues. Action's been decluded, deal two damage to an enemy at a connecting location, which I think includes the location if that location is an enemy. And you can test book four to deal an additional damage. I don't see myself using this because I don't see myself killing the locations. I'm going for 10 seals. Getting a measures here with a double action parlay, we'll get to what it does when we actually parlay him. And little Sylvie's also attached to a location. Uh, you can't pick her up. That's not on the card, and she's on a random location. So of course the locations that mention her, she's not on any of the agendas or acts. This is an example of like lots of little things. I'm gonna be critiquing Hemlock Vale as I play it, where I think Hemlock Vale didn't get the polish it needed. Little Sylvie just shouldn't be here. Nothing on this board will ever tell you how to pick up Little Sylvie. You're gonna be told when you parlay when you parlay William Hemlock. Oh hey, you can go pick up Little Sylvie. That should put her into play. I don't know why it doesn't. So instead, since you can't pick up little Sylvie, uh, she's just here being confusing until you finally do the thing that lets you read from the book how you're supposed to get her. It's very weird. As for the rest of these locations, we have two bedrooms in play that have X shroud, and we're doing American counting. On both of these locations, X is one plus the floor number. So we're looking at three and five, and they have two clues and a lightning bolt. Oh wait, these are not the lightning bolt locations. These are the reaction, draw a card or gain two resources after you place a seal, which is nice. The lightning bolt locations are the washrooms, of which we have three making up this L. These locations are just randomized, so that's why it's gonna be weird. If I have to read through all of it to figure out what the map is. And all of them have four shroud, which is a bit rough for my team, admittedly. Lightning bolt move one clue on this location to the location directly below it, limit once per turn. So we can just drop these down to three and two shroud locations eventually, which is likely our plan, to be honest. And our last locations are the library, which after we full clear this location, we're able to connect the library to another location permanently, which is neat. And the other library is directly on top of it, which isn't super useful. I'm sure there's something I can do to optimize library, but it'll come up during play. With that done, let's get into it. I think the first turn is very like set in stone for Vets. I'm gonna play Stand Together, Runic Axe, and Deep Knowledge, and give all the cards to Winning. I think that's just locked in. And then since Winning's going to have this room handled, I don't need to be here anymore, I Lightning Bolt up and make sure I actually put those resources in. Now for winning, looking at the skills I actually have, I'm looking at a five to two test. That's only up three for opportunist, so I won't, like this is only beating plus two. I'd really want opportunist to pass on a minus three. So I wanna be up six against the bag if I'm using opportunist, which is not viable until the calculated risk action at the end of the turn. I'm also gonna use the lightning bolt on Vince and throw this down. I'm in an awkward spot where up three is enough to reliably just thieves get three times with sleight of hand, but I don't feel like I have the ability to like get my skill off the ground because calculated risk is last action. I'll lose my opportunist. Nimble, super minor and unimportant right now. Watch this isn't relevant either. I'm just going to play the sleight of hand, thieves kit, and on third action I'll opportunist calculated risk, but I'm just going to take two tests up to the normal way. That's a pass. It's a minus one. That is a pass as well. Also, let's get this fixed because that is not the correct thing. I have a Veil win in front of Winifred and a nothing in front of Vents. But the skull is minus the day number. Oh, it's minus current floor. I'm wrong. I thought it was actually always minus day number. But regardless, it's still minus one. So we're going to get two of those. Get two resources. And then on the last action, we're going to calculate a risk and opportunist for three, four, nine to two. Minus four is five to two, which is the three threshold to get that back. And I'll draw a card because I'm Winifred. Easy mark sits in the hand. This comes back. I get a resource from the thieves kit. Make sure to pick up my clue. And that's it for us. I'm feeling pretty okay. Uh, definitely triggered cigarette case on the last pass. I think I got it earlier than that, but the last one definitely doesn't. I don't know why I did that. I meant to click up key. There we go. And I don't like my draw one button not being there. 
Then over here for Fence's upkeep, we're looking at Unexpected Courage X2 and a Death. The Death is really nice. It makes it easier to deal with three shot locations on Fence, whereas previously it was kind of just shit out of luck with them. Swarm of Rats? Don't mind if I do. Locked Door. So it's forced onto a victory location guaranteed. I just want to put it on a location. Oh, I should have lightning bolted on Winifred. I forgot she was at this location. And speaking of forgetting things, I'm going to get back into the groove of this eventually. End of turn trigger on Jessica Hyde. I will have lightning bolted Winifred here. Like, that's what I would have done. And then it gets locked in front of her, unfortunately. Just, I was thinking it was group limit once per turn because there are so many things like this in our group limit once per turn. I'm just playing bad. But I am at my wit's end after Serial. We're going to try to get the play tighter than it's been, but holy shit. Also, we're going to lightning, lightning bolt that down into the foyer now that we're able to. At some point, Winifred's going to come back through, pick it up, and head over to the left side. I think the play is to make my way up to the top on uh, Vincent. When I come back out, I'll throw it down again. So I'm going to walk. Before I walk up, we have a rat in front of us. Rat needs to be dead. Hmm. Interesting idea, now that I think about it. I could let the rat hit me. Because then I can move, move. I wouldn't have time to do anything is the problem. There's no benefit. My base value is three, four, five to one. There's a curse in the bag. There's no reason not to spend one charge to beat curse. Because I'll get it back. Didn't even need to. And then I walk up. I lightning bolt this down from the other washroom. And I think I'm going to just walk up to this location. It's a two book test to parlay them. I can walk up, play death next turn. I don't need to do it now. Okay, I'm happy to just walk up. Over here on Winnie, it's a four foot test. We're at base five. Was this second unexpected charge upkeep? It was. That means I'm overdrawn, so I should discard a card. It's gotta be watch this. It's only one icon, and I clearly do not need the money. I'm trying to find a way for Unexpected Courage to get committed efficiently. The only way is if I'm going to be playing uh, pickpocketing. The issue is that, like, if I draw rats, I would kind of like to just trip them and leave. Later on, there will be locations spawning. The location that's going to spawn, I don't know if it's Lead Investigator or not. If it is Lead Investigator, that's a problem because Vince is not going to be able to deal with it. If it's any Investigator, we can just give it to Winnie and she can immediately flip it. Don't worry about it. The game will make sense in a second. I promise I'm not talking madness. I'm just going to commit the pickpocketing. There's more pickpockings in my deck. I don't feel like I have a ton of... I'm not getting a full... No, I want to play pickpocketing this turn is the issue. I want to play pickpocketing, break the door, and then do one other action. The only good action is Thieves' Kit. There's a second Thieves' Kit in there. I don't need to slide of hand right now. I can slide of hand a gun later. I can slide of hand the second Thieves' Kit later. It's fine to just play this, I think. So I'm just going to take the test on the door. Up one base. And because I just can't get this unexpected courage to work. There we go. Easy mark. Up four. Beats the bag. Take a card because I'm winning. I calculated risk. Do you change anything I'm doing? No. I spent five resources to play Thieves Get Pickpocketing. That's one too many. And this door is gone. I don't need to pick it up anymore. I can press that hotkey. Nice. That's it for both of us. Upkeep for Vince. Stand together is not really useful at all. Lucky said case number two is not useful at all. Agenda advances. I'm just going to do a lot. We're going to get the predation bag, the rules for the predation bag. These are going to get shuffled in as well as the discard pile. Welcome back, locked door. Good to see you again. And we're going to find the unsealed dormant location nearest to the most investigators and flip it to its enemy side. And then we're going to do this, which is just setting up the predation bag. So looking at the new agenda, you can see it's five doom. When the myth of space ends, make a predation test and lightning bolt. Either place two clues on your location or remove a seal from it, ready it, and flip it over. I don't know how a sealed location can ever have this happen, but apparently it can. Anyway, Vince is not going to be able to get his clues reliably. Is that true? Well, it's a five-child location. I don't want to drop them anyway. So yeah, we're going to flip Winnie's, which is going to cause an immediate predation test, which is nothing. And then we're going to get our evil cards. The door's fucking locked immediately. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Also, playing cards hurts, you know. I'm going to leave this here. I think that's the best place for me to put it, even though it affects both of them. I could copy paste it to both boards, but then I would end up discarding two at some point. I think I'm just going to unexpected courage opportunist to try to break it down the first time and then thieves get twice. Yeah, unexpected courage opportunist. Give me a card. And then we test up four. Hey, Pilfer, nice to see you. That's the exact amount I needed to win. 
Locked door is gone again. Need to stop drawing this. I'll play Pilfer next turn. This turn, I'm happy to just investigate. God, I really don't have cards. I'm going to drop two of my clues here. Oh, it did the thing. Well, first, it did two things. One, uh, alt right click to drop when you have exactly two selected now. For some reason, it drops both. I'm only trying to drop two of my three, not all of them. Uh, but the other thing it did, you can just barely see it. It generated clues when it flipped. So, uh... Oh, it's dropping two again. Same exact glitch. But I'm going to drop two of my own clues to flip him back. And thankfully, it didn't generate a third time. Also, that guy doesn't make opportunity attacks, so I was allowed to do that. But I obviously should have done it in the other order. I guess there's no test, so it doesn't matter what order I do it in. I'm just going to test twice up three. I don't have the skills to commit. I, I like, hopefully I get a decent minus one and I can draw a cigarette case. But I'm not fully online. Is that minus one? Is it zero? Uh, that is incorrect. This should be a minus one. Is anything else wrong? Because minus one is the minimum it can be. No, the rest of that is right. So I gain a resource, lose a charge, test again. Lose a charge, gain a resource, get my card, and draw two of clues back. That's it for winning. For Vents, I would like to clear this location and seal it because I'm going to have to come back here. Which is going to be the tarot for three. Then I'm going to investigate with practice makes perfect. And hope I hit a deduction. But if I don't, it means I'm hitting something that's relevant and I have a helper for this now. Last card, huh? I didn't even need to put it down there. I can put it up here. Deduction on the men puts me up four, I believe. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. I'm four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll commit crack the case. Should be just the minus four. Also curse minus two. Didn't need it. On the men goes aside. Deduction does not go there. Practice is perfect. It's very broken. I get both clues. And now I'm going to attempt to parlay William at plus three. That is enough. I read Codex four. And since I am not controlling little Sylvie, and it's day one, we all gain one clue from the token pool, which brings us both up to four. And now for the rest of the scenario, we can take control of little Sylvie, who as a reminder is an accessory slot, where if she's discarded from your hand or deck, you can play it paying its cost. And when a scenario card effect would discard a card from your hand or deck, you can exhaust little Sylvie and put that card on top of your deck instead. I will not be including this permanently in anyone's deck, and I'm not even happy about controlling it right now because I, like on Winifred, I'd rather keep my cigarette case. I take a damage, by the way, on Jessica Hyde when I play that uh, Practice Makes Perfect. I didn't play anything else. Correct? Correct. Yes, we're clean. This discards at the end of the round. Upkeep. Manual Dex is wonderful. Bone Saw is not really helpful at all, but it is worth committing. 1 of 5 Doom. I didn't do my Predation Test. Thank God it was a whiff. Evil cards, test three foot. Not great at that. Right, uh, <laughs> this should have healed. This should have healed, and I should have gotten on the men. I added it after my turn ended because I forgot about the Mythos card that was on her board. But it still applies, gives me my own the lend. And that is a thing that matters immediately because we're doing swarm. I commit this immediately. Up zero. Oh. I heal my physical trauma and get on the mend. Not how I was expecting to get on the mend back from this. Uh, this can either blank Thieves Kit or Cigarette Case. Seems like an easy Cigarette Case choice. Okay, sorry Cigarette Case. I would like to draw cards with you, but it looks like it's not happening. Testing Three Fist is pretty hard for this character to do outside of like specifically my signature. I think I'm gonna draw a card looking for something to commit. I think I'm gonna come back here later actually. I think my plan is to get three clues with Pilfer and Pilfer it some more later in this scenario. But right now, oh wait a second, I can use actions here. I can spend an action and spend two clues to seal this location, which is like kind of important. It's the whole goal of the scenario. And the thing I'm angling for here is getting calculated risk with Nimble as my last action on Pilfer. I spend an action and I just kill my cigarette case for a new one. And then last action, a pilfer for four. Not quite sure what menu I got lost in there. Calculated risk, nimble. I'm at five, six, seven, eight, nine to two. Seems pretty likely to work. I get a draw here. I get a draw from Winnie. Second pilfer, second. You just get love to see all of that. 
My turn ends, I get three of these clues. And then I can move three times, because Nimble's not like actions, it's just me getting moved by an effect. I'm actually gonna triple move up here to this four shroud location, and I'm gonna use this lightning bolt to toss the clue down, because it is not required to be during my turn. Now we're on Vincent, we're at this location, I can spend two clues and an action to seal this location, which needs to get done eventually. Then I'm going to walk down, because there's nothing to do up there. I'm gonna spend another action and another two clues to seal this location. I'm going to lightning bolt this clue down. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think I'm good. I think it's upkeep time. Savant is wonderful. Wounded bystander less so. Uh, so wounded bystander enters play with three damage on it. Cannot leave play while it has damage unless defeated. If it has no damage, discard it. When you take non-direct damage, at least one of it must be assigned to wounded bystander if able. Wounded bystander is defeated, you suffer one mental trauma. I got bandages which can keep him steady. But the only way to actually heal this guy this scenario is to find and play Hallowed Mirror and then two Soothing Melodies. Uh, it's really, really hard for me to deal with this guy before I get a Surgical Kit into my deck. He, it's like the reason Vincent always gets Surgical Kit is because it's the solution to this man. Anyway, 2 of 5 Doom. Which means this is the third test and we're still on rate. No, we're fucking not. I forgot to do one because this one did one when I flipped it. The only way for this to not be cheating is to force the 1 in 3 reality where this, because like anything else, I have to retcon a million actions. So it's annoying to do that, but like that's the closest I can come to keeping it even. And the simple truth is, I am well past restarting scenarios as I mess up a rules thing. I should also probably just like put this on top of my pull chaos token buttons. At the, like every time I do an infestation test. No, because I'm going to delete it at the start of my turns and then not remember it. That's not going to help. How can I put that somewhere where it's actually going to make me remember? Bam. That'll do it. Anyway, evil cards. Out of the walls. My location is sealed. So if I were to do this, it would result in me getting a random discard. Well, I don't want to commit on the men because I want the one and fourth to discard it. Okay, I just take the test. I fail. Ah, you... Bitch. They know what card I value. Uh, I have three damage on me, so this is going to be reduced down to a two difficulty test. If you fail, me, it's either take two damage or choose the card with the highest printing cost in your hand. That's Pilfer, so it's going to be two damage. I have a Savant I can commit, and then nothing else. I have a Bulldog I can commit. That's one, two, three, putting me at six to two. That beats the bag. That's worth. I don't want to discard this Pilfer. I draw a card because I'm winning. Get out of here. That'll trigger my cigarette case. I'm going to start with Winifred because like she's actually playing a game where things are happening. Vince has been contributing, absolutely, but it hasn't been like impressive at all. In fact, to that end, I might just be walking down on him. I don't know. I don't want both characters coming here, but I think it's unavoidable that they will. On Winnie, first action, I'm going to investigate. This is Shroud... Oh wait, I don't even need to investigate. I lightning bolt this down to a lower shroud value. And then I spend two of my clues to put a resource here as an action. That's my first action. Then I'm just gonna walk down to this location where I actually have to get the clues. That's my second action. And because there are four clues here now, it makes sense to use pilfer. It's a higher shroud value, so it's a better pilfer. We'd be looking at a skill value of uh, plus three. Five plus three is eight against three. That beats the bag. Okay, I spent all of my money. Last action on Pilfer. Good manual decks, quick thinking. I draw a card because I'm winning. We beat the bag. If we could win by two, that would be great. A minus one. I draw a card off manual decks. I get my action back off quick thinking. And I take three of the clues. Yeah, but he's doing really well this scenario, it feels like. Oh, hey, Arrogance, nice to see you. Does this do anything bad if it stays in my hand, or I just have to keep committing it? Yeah, I just have to keep committing it. That's the bad thing. I've got eight cards left. It's possible I cycle my deck very soon, so I don't really care about getting it out before the deck cycle. I don't like my hand right now. I'm actually just going to spend two more seals as my last action and seal this location. And uh, because I'm placing a seal on this location, I can gain two resources or draw a card. With Thieves Kit and more Thieves Kit, even though I'm on zero economy, I don't need economy. I draw a card. And that's it for winning.
Now, when he's able to pick this up, it would cost three actions to pick it up on events. I think I have to accept that Winnie's going to lose her cigarette case when she finishes this location. So I think the play... God damn it, we have to do the predation test. I'm so bad at this. I get the elder thing. Find the unsealed dormant location nearest to the lead investigator, which was this guy. So it's one of these two that we're not at, thankfully. And I flip it. What I was about to say is I think the play to get back to William was to clear both libraries and connect them to foyer and bedroom. So I can free action move to a library and then move to foyer. And it's not as hard to get back to the top to talk to William Hemlock. I think it's got to be the washroom. When this enemy location revealed, there are one or more clues on it attacks each investigator here. Get wrecked, idiot. So I'm going to walk left on Vincent. And I honestly think I'm just digging in the bag up to twice. It's not thrilling. That's a minus one. It's a clue. That's a minus one. It's a clue. I'll take both. That's it for us. Upkeep phase. Perception is wonderful. Anything you can do is better. One doom. <laughs> Try to click around it. Okay. We're going to keep this next to the Mythos cards we're drawing. Fungal rot. The axe is gone again. Hold in. There is a location that can matter. You don't actually need all the clues on the map. So I don't have... I do have to come back here. Because uh, I need to pick up this stupid doll. Arrogance is automatically committed to this, making me a base value of down two. It's only ripping me over one location. Like, it's annoying, but I don't think it's worth committing multiple cards to. Especially because anything you can do better is so much better with Opportunist, and I believe there's one left in the deck, isn't there? Yeah. So I'm going to let this be how I kill my Arrogance. Uh, I'm probably going to get hit if I do that for two horror. Honestly, sounds fine. There's no soak in this deck, by the way. There's just like literally none at level zero. I couldn't find a way to make it fit in the deck cleanly. It's happening. Nice star. Uh, you don't get hit, so that's good. And you discard this. But you do get dragged in. And while we're here, let's make this test. <laughs> we're going to remember it this time. Tablet. Each enemy location attacks each investigator at that location. And because there is one of those, we take two horror on away. And then it all goes back in the bag. We're at five of the seven seals we need to start progressing. Winifred's going to Lightning Bolt drop two clues and flip this off of its enemy side. I am going to spend two clues going first on Vincent to seal this location. I'm going to walk down. Actually, I don't want to be on a flippable location for reasons involving the Mythos. And I'm going to be doing something stupid with my last action anyway. I think it doesn't matter. Oh, and because we sealed this, we get to place our first connection. We're going to place it to the foyer. Which I'm going to put on the right side. Since I'm putting my seals on the left side. I set the sides completely backwards while doing it the correct way. Good job, brain. Very interesting. I am going to walk down. Even though it exposes me to Mythos, it's just action economy. Would really like a Pathfinder, but I don't have one. All right, for Winifred. I would like to get this sleight of hand played before the deck cycle. I'm going to use a lightning bolt and throw that into the foyer. We currently need to clear four more locations, which is eight clues, and we have two. So these clues are all that we actually need still. Because if we clear the foyer and get these two, that's the eight we need total. Okay. On Winifred, I'm going to drop these two clues as an action and put that down. Seal this location. I believe that is seven. There are seven, so we advance. There are more seals in play than enemy locations. We read the first one, put the set aside a shapeless seller enemy into play. Pretty sure that's where he goes. Does this show a seller floor in the diagram? Yes. Yes, there is a seller floor. Okay. Reading that made me realize that I was pulling skull up here on Vincent. And instead of realizing that I was on bro three, I read it as column one because I've recently did a test play on the minecarts where it's how far to the left you are and not how high you are. Grumble, grumble. I'm so dumb. It's too late. It's happened. If it affected the roll, then let's imagine I drew a softer dice. Unfortunate. And we advance to heart of the house. Uh, the instructions make it feel like we've set this up wrong and both acts are supposed to be set aside because it referred to this as the set aside act, but whatever. 
Clues still cannot be discovered from locations with no investigators, and action if you... This is all the same stuff. But forced, after an enemy location attacks you, move one location at a time to Shapeless Cellar. An objective when it's in the victory display, advance. The Shapeless Cellar... Does it have a backside? No. Coming down to Shapeless Cellar, I can either deal 10 damage to it and just kill it the hard way, or I can just get rid of all of its clues. Both work. Next up, I'm going to move down on Winifred to the foyer. And I'm just going to investigate with a Thieves' Kit. And that is base 5 to 2. I can watch this easy mark to draw a card, and I will do exactly that. That puts me up 5 instead of up 3. I had to bet a money to use watch this. I forgot about that part. Uh, so I bet the minimum and I gained the minimum. Is that a minus 1 or a plus 1? It doesn't matter. I was up, up so much that cigarette case triggers either way, and so does winning. And I will take one of these clues. And do I want a lightning bolt move now? Is there any advantage to that? I don't believe there is. So that takes us to upkeep. This guy doesn't do anything to adjacent locations or anything like that, right? Right. Upkeep. Easy mark. Guard dog. Move this. How are we going to do him? Four of five. Uh, if you say so. Put that down here. This is a four fist test. If I fail, I take two damage. Oh no, that would be so unfortunate. Wow, I take two damage, that sucks. Anyway, moving on to Winifred's. We get Alien Whispers. Test three head, reach what you fail by, choose one, take a damage, take a horror, or discard a card at random from your hand. Honestly, none of that sounds that bad. Oh, it has to be assigned to assets I control, so I have to discard randomly. Yeah, you know, I thought about it. I decided I don't want to do that. So I'm going to commit. Anything you can do better is six, seven, bringing me eight to three. It's actually only up five. I thought it would be better than that. Discard three random cards is definitely worse. Okay, I'm up five. I probably don't get opportunist back. What floor is he on? Floor one. I get opportunist back. And when he draws a card. And that was a minus one, up five. I get a draw off cigarette case. Get out of here. I'm gonna delete this. Put this back on the block of the Doom Clock. And get a cultist out. Wonderful. Oh, right. Uh, he takes one of that damage. That is a slight problem that I should have been concerned about. Right, so post-editing, this first part of the video is about 31 minutes long right now, it seems. And what's left in the video is another hour of gameplay and obviously it's less than that with editing maybe like 40 45 minutes cutting out all the pauses all the points where i start and think and go in circles because that happens a lot you might get the impression i play faster than i actually do because every time i pause and i read things you don't have to see it but the point is that for reasons that become apparent i spend a lot of time in this scenario doing something that ultimately doesn't matter so I'm just going to cut out like 15 to 25 minutes of me sealing locations that ultimately don't need to be sealed. Because while I was right that sealing all the locations gives you bonus experience, I was wrong that doing it yourself mattered in any capacity, and my past self will get into that in the future. I don't feel like making you watch me relatively easily steamroll through a scenario and just waste time doing shit that doesn't matter. Because at the time I thought that it did, because why would I be allowed to seal locations on the act card if it was actually completely and utterly pointless? Anyways, I'm going to give it off to past me at the end of a mythos phase at a point where it seems relatively organic to reintroduce you to this scenario. And I don't think I have to like do any test on Winifred this turn. I just spend two clues. I put down the final seal. And then for double action, I talk to Gideon a second time. I've finally found the time. We're going to increase this relationship by one and get a bonus experience, which again, I'm going to mark the exact same way. Wait, did that actually say take control of him? Yes, it did. Unlike this one, Gideon's just not helping you. He's like, what are you going to do? Use me for soak? Fuck off. Okay. I think I double action on Vincent to here. As a move. And then the rat's going to hunt up because it's equidistant. I can pick which way it hunts. And then I can move here, Lightning Bolt, into the cellar, and we can start killing the boss next turn. Which means there's nothing that really matters. I'm going to play the Sparrow Mask, because it's the only thing I can do to moderately increase the chance of wounded bystander surviving. Enemy phase. He hunts. He hunts. And this rat can move here, here, or here. They're all equidistant to the nearest target. We put him in the top right. Easy choice. 
upkeep phase, manual decks is nice. Any card is better than none, but burning the midnight oil is not very helpful. Over here, we have to drop a card. I should know how I'm dealing with this guy. We've got eight damage of axe swings and a ton of bullets. He's got three fist and two foot. I'm pretty sure we're killing him. But the flip side of that is, is there a second pilfer in Winnie's deck? Okay, no, there's not. But still, like, we don't have to get a lot of clues here. It's also four shroud. I think it's easier to kill the boss. This has been out of play for so fucking long. It should definitely be shuffled in the deck since the deck got shuffled relatively recently, apparently. And that was me handling enemy phase, which is why we're at the top of the round for Doom. Grab a copy of this to remind myself with. Oh, it's already here. I got distracted with enemies, apparently. Hold in. There's an enemy location in play. And uh, that's actually where I'm going. But also, if I fail by four or more, it's going to kill the innocent bystander. I have nothing to commit. Sparrow Mass doesn't work on this. I'm four to four. Don't get minus four. I guess I'll just lose an action for passing. More rats. When he's just drawing rats three turns in a row, I think. It feels like that. I'm gonna play sleight of hand. I'm gonna fucking shoot this rat with a gun. Uh, up five baseline. This goes in, or sorry, up four baseline, up three with that. I'm gonna do manual decks, watch this. I'm gonna bet three resources because it's funny mostly, and this puts me up six. I make my money, and all, and then some back. I draw two cards, one from Winnie, one from manual decks. No cigarette case, sad times. Rat is dead, arrogance comes back. I move, and I lightning bolt into the cellar. Master Retaliate, cannot make attacks of opportunity, cannot be sealed or flipped. After you make a skill test, fail a skill test while investigating and attacks you. So it has Retaliate no matter how you handle it, unless you know you evade it, which is what we're gonna be doing. And force, there are no clues here, add it to the victory display. I'll just kill it instead though. But step one of killing it is dodging it. Arrogance must be committed. I'm going to commit pickpocketing because it's useless and calculated risk on my last action is always great. Five, four, back to five, eight to two. Beats the bag. I'm glad you didn't do me dirty. You come back to hand. I wish you left. Uh, and I dodged with pickpocketing, so I draw a card. And he's also evaded. Why do I have an action flipped on Vince immediately? I think I was starting to say I move and I lightning bolt, and then I realized that I really, really have to get better with this fucking test. How? How? How's it still over here? At least it's somewhere where I can remember to do it. I get a random encounter card on Vince because there's nothing for it to flip. Well, let's go ahead and see what that does. Vince might not be helping this turn. I commit this to get to get plus one. Oh wait, this is uh, losing resources. We're fine. I thought it was losing actions. Two to three. I fail by two. I lose two resources. Consider yourself lucky, wounded bystander. Those termites only wanted my money. Anyway, like I was saying, I moved to the horror connection from the library. And then I lightning bolt in. Despite my best attempt to fuck all of this up, it's worked out. And then I'm going to spend two charges on two different attacks. Both attacks are looking at four, five. Ugh. I thought you'd be dealing more damage than this guy. Oh, also, this comes back to hand. Slide of hand is over. Do I spend two charges on both for accuracy? My base value is only three, four, five to four. Yeah, I'm going to spend two charges on both swings. Uh, so then instead of beating minus one, I beat the minus threes. Uh, both are just for two damage. I don't beat minus worse. I dealt two damage. Wow, strong flex fighter. Glad we brought him. Anyway, that's it for us. Enemy phase. He hunts. He hunts. He hunts. Upkeep. The location readies. We're going to pivot into trying to investigate now after that fucking incredible turn by Vince. Five of eight doom and evil cards. Strange mutations. Had five, reduce the difficulty of the test for one by each heart. I don't have any horror. Technically, I can't discard two cards in my hand, but I can try. And I don't think I need the second Sparrow Mass, so uh, just going to fail and discard a completely useless card from my hand. I'll commit this to an evade test. It can matter. Like the horror can't is the thing. So sure. Yeah, I fail that even though that's a minus zero. It's a, uh, it's a difficulty five test. 
And I choose to discard, or sorry, to take two horror, and that's fine. And then, no, you get over here. Grappling spawn. Who's this guy? I'm not him. Is that Skids? Well, <laughs> I think that's Skids. If it is, it's really funny that for a card called Grappling, like you can't evade it, they put a picture of the first guy to ever care about foot as the guy who can't get out. Anyway, 422, Hunter, it's not Knight, so it's not Retaliate. It's plus zero health because we're at the bottom. And then we do the test and nothing happens. Honestly, we're just pulling for a like one in five increase and got a chance of like one encounter card on fence at this point. It's not a big deal. So I can evade sleight of hand, shoot, shoot. It goes down to four, but Vince can't fucking finish the thing off. Am I actually gonna be like, fine, I'll just get the clues? <laughs> it's four shroud. Vince can't do that either. He's fucking useless. Uh, level level zero Vince is not doing a strong showing. I don't think you're staying where you are in the tier list, friend. Maybe it's a bad game. Maybe like giving away deep knowledge turn one really fucks up low level seekers. And it's only the top tier seekers that get to play the support build. But this feels very bad. One of my last two cards is guaranteed to be quick thinking. But I actually only draw one card per skill test right now. I'm honestly just like looking at Pilfer, anything you can do better. And I'm like, we, we just have to go the clue route. We're just gonna let Vince engage this guy or kill this guy. It's hard to say which. Like it's possible for sleight of hand thieves kit, but I discarded my thieves kit, of course. So Winnie can only get four clues and I can't trust Vince to do any damage or get any clues here. It's so sad. There's a lot of minus ones, minus zeros. Vince can get clues here. And since he needs a second charge to do anything, I'm gonna go first on him and just dig in the bag and like hope I don't repeatedly hit tablet and heal the fucker. I don't think there's anything else Vince can do. He needs a second charge to use this runic axe effectively this turn. And his hand's just depleted of all resources. Okay, yeah, it's, it's just up three. I, I, I hate it. It's not up three, it's up one three times. But he can't help fight, so we're just gonna see if we can divert course. That's one clue. That's a miss. That's a miss. Not really making it seem like a best play. If he got two, right? Like, which is pretty likely, we'd be able to just play the pilfer and use the thieves kit and win. Okay, on Winnie, first action, I'm going to evade the boss because it is two foots. I'm at five, six, seven. I bet a resource. I am up five. Minus three, I'm winning. Please give me the card. It is quick thinking. The boss is tripped. I'm going to evade this guy as well. I have a plan to kill him next turn with, oh, no, nope, British Bulldog only has three bullets in it. Man, we're really running into limited resource issues, aren't we? I can just take the one one and shoot him this turn. Pilfer's looking more like the way out of this. Yeah, I'm gonna trip this guy. I'm at up two, up three, up four. This should have been committed last time. I still passed, nothing changed. But uh, yeah, cancel out that quick thinking real quick. We're still up three. Gonna make it up five with unexpected courage. Minus three is fine. Welcome back, arrogance. I get my action back. The other guy is tripped. I draw a card because I'm winning. All right, that gives me a clear way out with gun. I think I already have a clear, four shrouds a lot. I can beat it once really easily on pilfer, but beating it the next couple of times is tough. If I pilfer now, it'll shuffle the pilfer in. Like, I think I actually just play pilfer with only anything you can do better. With the intention of, uh, I'm not drawing cards. I have no cigarette case. I don't have any skills left in hand. I think the only play, these are only shooting at five. Ah, fucking hell. It's so hard to get my last bit of resources over the top. It's so hard. I've got two more damage coming in next turn from Runic Axe, almost certainly. If I only need six on Winnie, it's obviously gun. I have to believe it's gun. I put gun in play. I should have drawn a card from pickpocketing and this should already have happened. I just forgot it was in play. So draw my card, take a horror. Clicked it the wrong direction. Hey, cigarette case, how's it going? I'm gonna give up on Pilfer. I don't think I have the resources to make it happen. I'm giving up on Pilfer. Arrogance, Pilfer, and anything you can do better are all going into a gun check. So that's up six, seven, six. That's 11 to, 
I think it's only three fight, right? Winnie, why why do you have, why do you have to show off? So for every two I succeed by, I get a card back to my hand. So I'll, I'll just take all of this back. Not to your hand, you're useless. But I'll go ahead and deal the two damage. And that'll be the end of Winnie's turn. Brings us to upkeep here, upkeep there, this readies. I'm gonna give this to... I'm gonna give this to Vincent, actually. This scenario's ending this turn. If this guy kills the bystander, it's funny, but it's not important. Six Doom, and we don't need to keep this up there anymore because we're gonna be done with it soon. Fuck all fucking rot, it goes on Spiro Mask. Thank God, that's the real reason to run Spiro Mask. Out of the walls. Out of the walls is just a three foot test, and if I fail, I take one one. I don't even care. I commit arrogance, please leave my hand. I pass test one. Oh, I can't use my words, but like once again, arrogance is just like bringing the good tokens and refusing to get out of my hand on the easy test, where I'd like to see it fail. The predatory house is gone. We do the test. Vincent gets, oh no. Bystander's fucking dead. Yeah, Vince is just gonna take a mental trauma. That kills Bystander, I can't play around it. Just gonna put a giant Bystander over here to remind myself. Uh, we take one, two on both, which nearly kills Winifred. And Bystander dies. I assume he removes from game. No, he just goes in my discard pile. I can draw him again, it's very funny. Uh, the other one one can just like go on Will, who cares? Unlucky, there were four tokens in there that didn't, three tokens out of the four that did nothing. Anyway, Winterford's going first, and she's going to evade the boss with anything you can do better. I drew the second fucking pilfer, it's the only card in the deck where I regret this route. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna play sleight of hand, I'm gonna put the other gun into play, and I'm going to be attacking with this gun three times this turn. No, 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 we're not shooting three times. Put that last bullet back. We need to dodge this guy. Yes, fucking retaliate. It's kind of important. Arrogance is also like going into all my tests. So I'm base up two and I'm running out of cards to commit. Like I have two sorted, I guess. I'm hard deviating from clues. We're giving up on clues. I've got the bullets. That's the plan. This puts me up for it. This is beating the bag. So first test, beat the bag on the dodge. I get my Winifred card. You come back. These two go aside and the boss is tripped. And now I can shoot the boss twice. Base value is up two. Really only up one though. Anything you can do better, opportunist, puts me up two, up eight on my second action. Get opportunist back, draw a card. This goes away, he takes two damage. Last shot, opportunist, opportunist, avant, because I would really like to hit him and win this turn. I drew Hallowed Mirror at the turn he died? That's fucking mean. The game's bullying me. I take a 25% chance, get punished, lose my weakness, and draw Hallowed Mirror the upkeep before it, thinking I was safe. Bit rude. Uh, anyway, base value four, five, six, seven, eight to three. That beats the bag. Do the two damage. Comes back. I didn't read that token. Let me check if that was a minus two or a minus three, because on minus two I get the card back, and on minus three I don't. All right, Winifred did it in a second auto fail. We got a minus one, these come back. We get our Winifred card, he's down to two health. Vince, my man, I need you to pass a check up three. You haven't had a very good game, but you're at three, four, five, six, seven for two damage against difficulty three. It beats the bag, just don't auto, it doesn't even matter if you auto, it, it does, it's gonna get Winnie killed probably. But it's fine, he passes. It's in the victory display. Vince, we need to have a talk about your performance. We need to have a performance review after this scenario. These are also in the victory. I never did dining room? <laughs> Fucking Christ. Well, I guess I don't get the victory for dining room when I count on my tremendous stupidity. That was a surprise to me. But it's in the victory display. We got through it. And we flip each enemy location to its location side, place one resource as a seal on each unsealed dormant location. You don't need to do it? <laughs> All of the shit I've been doing isn't necessary. There's like, oh, you killed the seller? Well, fuck the other locations. You could've just leave. Why'd you give it to me as a, 
Why did you leave this stuff on the front of the card if doing it's an active waste of time? I'm so salty. I went out of my way to like seal locations I didn't need and lost victory for it because it just gives it to you. I will be reiterating the opinion that I think this is not a particularly polished campaign. Anyway, we get R1, which is actually R2. Uh, there are no squids left in the back, so none go into my chaos bag. We found a little Sylvie. I don't want that in my deck. What are you talking about? Do I do I not want it in my deck? Like, I could put it in Vince. I really can't. Vince has actual accessories he cares about, too. Also, it's just not very good. Because we have eight or more seals in play, we get a bonus experience because there are the full ten. We get the two bonus experience. So we get two more for these. And in our campaign log, we flip to the other side and we check off Hemlock House. And then we go to the first evening's prelude on page 31. I am going to tilt off the face of the earth about dining room. Give me a second. It's so st I just forgot this location was a victory location because everything has text in the bottom right corner. Why are they victory zero? Just give them victory zero on this side. There's no reason for it to be on the front of the card. Oh my god. Uh, I just realized that doesn't even make sense. That's just a thing that should have been called and wasn't. All right. I took a brief step away from my computer. And I do actually think it's just bad design to have victory zero on the front of these. They don't go into the victory. Oh, they need victory zero to count for the way they worded the resolution. Is that really why it's this way? No. Yeah, check the victory display and the number of seals in play when the scenario ended. No, it says and the number of seals in play. It, it counts here. They don't need to be in victory display. There's no reason for victory zero to be on the front of these cards. It just makes it hard to tell at a glance where victory is. And you don't need all the clues in the map to do this. So like it, you're programmed to just start ignoring the victory. And it's just like a two straddle location on the bottom row. It doesn't feel like a victory location once you've gotten more than half the clues there and you have to go away because this, this scenario gives you reasons to leave and drags you away all the time. Oh my God. So here's where I'm at, uh, aside from general polish issues. That's going in the victory display. It's entirely for my own sanity. I did something tremendously harder than getting two clues at a two shroud location that's right next to the boss. Like I could very easily have done that. Instead, I went across the entire map and put down a bunch of seals I didn't need because like uh, it's it's a scenario about sealing things. And I remembered that you get bonus experience for sealing everything. And uh, I didn't remember that it just seals it for you, which <laughs> what? <laughs> Flip each enemy location to its location side, so all enemies become locations, and then place one resource as a seal on each unsealed dormant location. That just seals everything. I've done something explicitly harder than the actual criteria for victory, and it makes me happy to have the victory. And if I had needed to do what I did and just forgot in this location, I'd be like, okay, I didn't get the victory. But I did something decidedly more difficult. I, I don't understand why that text is there. It, it bothers the shit out of me. So how do I feel about Hemlock House? Well, if you check this thing down here, your bonus experience is basically for killing everyone or for stealing everyone. Which means as a fighter, this scenario doesn't happen. You sort of saw that with Vince, this scenario, but I remember being a fighter here and just being bored out of my mind. Like, oh, it's the museum again. Not a huge fan of Hemlock House. The fact that the entire map is just like the same locations randomly ordered is not something I like. Every time I see the phrase max on any card, I get angry about it. I hate the max rule because there are two instances of it and there's no reason that they have to be unique. It should be limits. If there's one instance, max and limit are the same. There are very few situations where I like max. This is a situation where like not being able to get the second tunnel just makes me angry. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be that way. Why? <laughs> Why does it do this? Is it just because there's no victory on the map and people felt really bad when they finished the scenario and they had like sealed five and killed two and then killed the boss and they like didn't talk to Gideon or William a second time and they literally get one XP? Two, maybe three? Yeah, probably. I, I don't know how you end up with this on the back of the card. And then like if it's on the back of the card, why are you letting me waste my time do shit that you know doesn't matter? I think that's my big problem with it. It's the same thing, like I didn't talk about Ridden and Rock at the start, but Ridden and Rock in my other video, I go on about it. 
why why would you ever give the player the ability to do a thing that is traditionally good that is implied to be good and have it be actively worthless where doing it is just wasting their time and energy that should not be on the back side of this card man or if it is there should be some reason to suspect it will be and there's not and like yeah now that i know it is it'll be stuck in my memory forever and i'll play the scenario different in the future but it doesn't change the fact that for fighters it sucks there's nothing to fight it doesn't change the fact that, like, it's actually just a basically random map without any interesting challenges on it. The boss is only scary because it has Retaliate. Just have someone trip it. There's a million ways. I actually had a pretty decent time that scenario because only Vincent was getting screwed by not being able to fight things. And even then, he could still flex a little and do his role to some degree. And then I feel like I just had rag pulled and, like, the last half of this video, I was just fucking around wasting time. Anyway, what's that come out to be? Seven experience? I'll see you in the next one, where hopefully I'm not angry anymore. But based on my memories coming back when I looked at Ritten and Rock, I suspect I'll still be angry come next episode. Or more accurately, I'll have chilled out when we start, and then by the end of it, I'll be like, oh Christ, this, this campaign, again. I was looking forward to being positive at the end of the scenario, and then this shit. Why? Why did I just get... In Yes, the objective is kill the Shapeless Seller to win. But there's always an objective that wins and you take the wrong turn knowing it's not progress to go get victory. That's how every scenario works. Why leave this here if it cannot benefit me? If there's no difference in a sealed location where I've dropped... <laughs> I'm not going to go on about this. You understand that I am angry and I hope you understand approximately why I'm angry. I'm going to call it for now. I've been rather than go here, it's... Up until I flipped the resolution, I was feeling pretty good about the scenario. And now it's gone from like an okay scenario with some problems to something I despise. I hope you enjoyed watching me in spite of that and watching me implode with rage right at the end. Thank you for watching. If you could do the YouTube algorithm dance, I'd greatly appreciate that. As always, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Helps the channel grow, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. But what I do care about is the people who support me on Patreon. Seriously, I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, see you in the next one. As soon as I finished recording that, I immediately bitched in my personal Discord of my tabletop group of how stupid this is. And I found a comparison that tells you, like, another way to... This is how I see this card, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go on forever about this. I'll never stop being mad here. This text, it's like if there was any normal scenario where there were locations with victory. There weren't many on this one. But imagine there were locations that were unrevealed that had victory. And it was a big map, like 12, 14 locations. And about 8 locations in, you reveal the boss, right? Maybe 10 or 11. And it says, kill the boss to advance. And then you flip over to R1 after you kill the boss. And it says a similar statement to this. It says, reveal all unrevealed locations and remove all clues from all locations. That's how I feel about this. That's the same text. 